What's up, YouTube? My name is Darren Bowman from the Bowman Board of Trade. And in today's video, I'm going to break down my process for profitable trading that I have built over the last year and a half of trading options in the stock market. I'm going to give you a simple six step process, which will allow you to gain consistency and start trading within a framework where you can measure your success and identify problem patterns and then move forward to move past these roadblocks and hiccups in your trading to achieve consistency. So I'm going to go through these six steps one by one and explain what I mean by them in order exactly as I would go through them in the market. And I'll show you examples of things I look for in each trade as I'm putting them on and how they relate to these specific steps. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So this is the basic framework, which I'll be explaining today. And these are the steps which you will implement when you are trading in the market in exactly this order. And I'll go through them. So number one, identify market conditions. This is the overall temperature of the market. If we're in an uptrend, downtrend, etc. Step number two is draw your key areas of value. It's either going to be a supply zone or a demand zone. Maybe it's end of day price. Maybe it's VWAP or pre-market low, pre-market high. You need to draw these areas of value on your chart. Step number three is then identify a high quality setup within these areas of value and look to play the market long or short. Step number four, before you put on any trade, you need to determine your risk to reward ratio or how much you're willing to risk to see if your trade is gonna work out in your favor. Number five, you've entered your trade. Now you need to watch price action and capture the entire market imbalance. So I will go through how you do that by looking at candlesticks and price analysis. And lastly, number six, is you need to log and recreate your trades in your trading journal to identify your strengths and your weaknesses and how you can move forward and gain consistency in the markets. But before we get into it, I do wanna go over the rules of the game. And I call them the rules of the game because if you do not understand these critical points in the market, you will be setting yourself up for failure. It's very important that you know these points because they will allow you to approach the market in the right state of mind. So number one, nobody knows what will happen next in the market. You could be on a Discord channel, you could be watching somebody live on YouTube and you're putting all of your trust in them. But the fact of the matter is nobody, not even big institutions on Wall Street, know what's gonna happen next in the market. The only thing we can do is look at our past trades and identify setups which have a higher probability of working out in our favor. So nobody knows what will happen next. They'll try to tell you, but they don't know. Number two, the market owes you nothing. A lot of the times you will approach the market and you'll draw out your zones. You'll have a chart pattern which looks like it's worked 10 out of 10 times and you think you know everything about the market. It does not care about your feelings. You could have a zone which has been respected in the past. It doesn't care how much you believe in your strategy. It will do whatever it wants. And it's very important that you understand that. Number three, and following right on from the last point, the minute you think you know something about the market's next move, you will fail. It has a way of humbling you over and over. And I'm sure many of you traders know exactly what I'm talking about. But the second you think you have some tricky bit of information about what's going to happen next in the market, it will cause you to fail because you are not perceiving the market's constant moves, what it's telling you. Number four, if you cannot prove to yourself that you can make consistent small wins over a long period of time, you will never be ready to handle the emotions of a thousand dollar trade, ten thousand dollar trade. It does not matter. You need to prove to yourself that you can make consistent gains with $20 trades, $50 trades in the beginning. Because if you cannot do that, it's no point in risking thousands of dollars on trades. 
you're just gonna cause yourself stress and pain from the market, and it's gonna set you up for a terrible start in trading. So start with the consistent small profits. Prove to yourself that you have a strategy that's reliable, and that's what I'm giving you today. And the last point is, if you do not know what you did to win the last trade, you obviously don't know what to do to keep from losing in this trade. And this ties right in to the last point, which is logging and recreating your trade. You need to know what you did right and what you did wrong, and you need to burn the things that you did right into your memory and commit them to your subconscious so they become a natural occurrence in your trading. And obviously, on the other side, you need to identify your weaknesses and your problem behavior patterns and then come up with solutions to fix those. We will get further into that in step number six. But that being said, these are the rules of the game. This is how I enter the market every single day. And this is how we're going to enter this strategy right now. So number one, identify market conditions. So what does that really mean? So what I view it as is taking the overall temperature of the market. You want to zoom out and look who has been in control and what are some important external factors that could affect the price. Maybe there's big news. Maybe there's interest rates. Maybe a bank collapsed. There's any number of things that can happen in the fundamentals in the market, and you need to know these things and take them into account in the way you put on your trades. Another part is understanding the bigger picture on a large time frame chart, and I'll go into that right here. So this is zooming out on a one-day chart on the S&P 500, which is what I do at the beginning of every single day, and I identify the large trends that are taking place because I want to set myself up on the same side as buyers or sellers and trade with the trend. We'll get into that later about what that means. But I, but I always zoom out on the one day chart and just look at if we're approaching any large supply zones. You can see right here we have a large supply zone created a long time ago and, and you need to take that into consideration when you're putting on trades. You need to be aware of sellers stepping into the market and know in your mind that that is a possible solution about what might happen in the market. And at the same time, you have a demand zone here and price re-enters the demand zone. You wouldn't be looking necessarily to go short. You would be waiting for buyers to show up in this zone and play the market long. So that's what it means by identifying market conditions. So this is zooming in a little bit closer on the one hour chart. And as you move closer and closer in to the day that you're trading on smaller and smaller time frames, you want to identify what has been happening in the past. So what I've circled here is this is the trading, the open trading hours on the S&P 500. And you can see consistently there has been strength out of these zones. Each day there has been buyers buying up price out of these demand zones. And that is a very good sign. That is a bullish sign that buyers are in control and that would have contributed to you playing long on this day, buying, playing with buyers until your next zone. So that is what I mean by identifying strength patterns in the market. Maybe it's an uptrend, maybe it's a downtrend. There's certain things you can look for and you need to know that before entering each day. So trading with trend, I mentioned it before. What does it really mean? So what it means is you want to trade on the side of buyers or sellers. And it allows you to be on the correct side of the market and set the odds in your favor because there's no point in fighting the market. All that does is puts the odds against you. And what it will do is if you lose a trade, you will constantly think, okay, I'm just going to re-enter short, re-enter short and buyers will continually step up. And your trades are just providing liquidity for a further move against you. And it all comes down to thinking that you know better than the market. That's really what we talked about in the rules of the game, but you just need to trade with the trend, look at the, the trend that's going on. This is what I mean by identifying market conditions. So step number two, once you've identified market conditions, 
now you are going to draw key areas of value on your chart. So I usually have zones drawn from prior days. Maybe it's a zone that I drew a month back that's now coming into play on this day when I'm trading. So you're gonna have zones all over your chart and as price moves, you're gonna update these zones. So what are these zones? So as price moves across the chart, what that really is, is institutions, large institutions, probing the market to try to find areas of value where buyers and sellers agree on the price. And what these zones will allow you to do is graphically represent these areas of fair value. I usually draw green for demand zones and red for supply zones. And inside these areas of value is where you will look to make your moves in the market. And the reason for that is because these are usually areas of high volume because they are where large money is playing the market and you want to play with large money. And lastly, these zones, supply or demand zones, will act as price magnets throughout the day. So as price is moving, price always wants to come back and test these values to see, are buyers still here? Are buyers willing to defend their position? If they are, we will be looking to play the market long out of our demand zone. So these zones will act as price magnets and you will see that through some examples that I'll show. So like I said, there's two zones, two colors that I draw. There's a supply zone where sellers push price down out of a specific area. So this is where buyers and sellers agreed and now you see a sharp imbalance where sellers overpower the buyers and bring price all the way down. And that is where I would draw a supply zone and expect sellers to show up in that area again when price re-enters that zone. And much the same on the right here, we have demand zones. I draw it in green, and this is where I want to look for buyers to show up and defend their position. So that's exactly what happened. Price moved away sharply. I drew my zone and price re-entered this area to test if buyers were defending their position. Yes, they were. And I moved price up right out of demand. So that's what I'm talking about when I say supply and demand zones. So what are they and where do they really come from? I don't want to go too deep into it, but all it is is just an area where buyers and sellers were equal in the market and this caused price to trade in a sideways fashion. There was no weight one way or the other. Buyers generally agreed with sellers on the price and we call this a fair area of value or area of fair value. And you can see these zones on all time frames. You can see them on the daily time frame, on the five minute, one hour. They happen on all time frames and you need to draw these on all time frames as well. Like I said, these are areas where large institutions will be looking to trade and they're gonna give you your where component of your trade. So obviously you need to know specific areas where you're gonna put on your trade. That is why we have supply and demand zones. And lastly, about the zones, you, you will draw a supply zone. And the reason it's a supply zone is because price moves down from that area of value. So when price moves down and price is below the zone, it's acting as supply. So when price moves into that zone, you look for sellers to step in. And what happens when price moves above this zone is now it acts as demand. So once it acted as supply, now we have broken above it. Now we look for buyers to defend this area. It's called a break and retest strategy, which I'll get into later, but that is the essence of what supply and demand does, whether we're above that zone or below that zone. Moving on to our third step. Once you have done identified your market conditions and drawn your key areas of value, now you look for a high quality setup within these zones. What is a high quality setup? It is a chart pattern inside one of these areas of value that you've previously determined. So what you're going to look for is to identify whether buyers or sellers are taking control from one of your key levels. Like I said, you look for sellers to step in in a supply zone or you look for buyers to step in in a demand zone. 
and these chart patterns repeat themselves in statistical probability. And you will collect data on all of these strategies and these chart patterns, and you will learn that when you see a certain pattern, it is a certain human visual representation of a human behavior, and it will show you buyers or sellers taking control in a specific area. So this whole area of trading is called technical analysis and is a massive area. I'm not gonna go too into it because for me, it's not as important as just trading price and volume. However, it's very important to recognize what patterns you're looking for in the market because they will help you set the odds heavily in your favor if you play with them. So these are certain setups that I draw. When I talk about a setup, I'm talking about any sort of chart pattern. If I say head and shoulders, for example, I like the head and shoulders setup because it is a reliable pattern for me. A cup and handle has also been a very reliable pattern. These are all setups. Demand rejection, break and retest like I mentioned before. And all this is, is a visual representation of buyers or sellers taking control of the market. And these chart patterns play out on all time frames. Like I said, the daily chart, daily time frame, the hourly time frame, down to the five and the one minute chart. So that's very important to note. And as well, these patterns can happen. Cup and handle could happen in reverse. Head and shoulders can happen in inverse as well. Demand rejection turns to a supply rejection. All of these setups can turn one way or the other. So now that you've identified chart patterns to look for, you need to zoom in even closer and look at what are the specific candlestick characteristics within these chart patterns that can tell you or validate what chart pattern you're looking for. So it's very important as you progress in your trading journey, you will be able to tell the story by looking at each one of these candles and tell what happened inside the time frame of each one of these candles. And that's what this slide is about. On the left, I have two bullish scenarios. And on the right, I have two bearish scenarios. So we'll look right here. We have a bullish, this is called a bullish engulfing candle, where we have a small red candle with a wick to the downside, and we have a large green candle showing that buyers overpowered sellers. This is a bullish indication. If you see this within one of your chart patterns, this will be a sign to take the market long. And the same, we have a bullish hammer candles. This is where you have a non-existent or very small wick to the upside, and a long wick to the downside, showing that buyers pushed price up and overwhelmed the sellers that were once there, but now they got overwhelmed, and these are signs to look to play the market long. And on the same, on the right-hand side, we have bearish, bearish scenarios where sellers are pushing the price lower, so we have bearish engulfing candles, and we have bearish hammer candles. So I will get into some, some examples right now. So this is a trade. These are all trades that I took and I identified a supply zone where I was looking for sellers to step into the market. And what I saw was a bearish engulfing candle within a supply zone, which I was looking for sellers to step in. Also, this setup was a head and shoulders, left head, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and a bearish engulfing candle. This is where I took the market short because I had all of these indications telling me that sellers were going to step into the market. That's what I call a high quality setup. Example number two, I had a demand zone where I was looking for buyers to step up and I had a supply zone where I was looking for sellers to show up. Now what happened was this example was a little bit different, but under this supply zone, I was expecting to see weakness, sellers step in. But what I saw instead was buyers. I, these are all bullish candles right here. You can see they have long wicks to the downside and they look like b bullish hammer candles. So this is where I took the market long and played with buyers and 
and with high volume and blast it right through this supply zone. The next example you can see, this is what I look for. This is a very good sign if you're trying to play the market long. You want to see these bullish candles with long wicks to the downside inside your predetermined area of value, your supply zone, your demand zone. Next example, we have two bullish engulfing candles inside our area of value, inside our demand zone, and this is where you're going to play the market long. These are very good things to see within your demand zone, and they will give you extra confidence and conviction to play the market long. And finally, this example shows long wicks to the upside. Now, what this represents is there were sellers in this zone, which I had previously drawn out, this supply zone, and they constantly pushed price down. There were buyers who brought price up into supply and sellers pushed that price back down. So the next time that price re-enters that supply zone, I'm looking to short the market and target our demand zone below for a nice short. So these are certain things that you look for that will constitute a high quality setup. So before you put your trades on, You've identified market conditions. You've drawn out your key areas of value. Now you see a chart pattern forming in a zone. Now your next thing, step number four, is to, de to determine your risk to reward scenario. An important thing to understand about trading is you cannot win unless you're willing to accept the risk of a trade not working out in your favor. So every setup has a certain probability of not working out in our favor. For me, the head and shoulders setup is usually about 70%. The end of day rejection or the demand rejection is usually about 80%. And things like cup and handle are more like 60%. So on all of these setups, there's sometimes 40% chance, 30% chance, 20% chance that the trade is not going to work out in your favor. And this is where risk to reward comes in. You determine how much you're willing to risk to see if this trade is going to work out in your favor. It's very important to know what you're risking when you put on a trade. And determining this risk to reward helps us in our trading because it gives us two scenarios to look for. We set a stop loss where our strategy is proven incorrect, which is that 30-20% of the time that trades don't work out in our favor. And we can set a target, which is where we want price to move to, and that's where we will take our profits once price moves there. So there's two scenarios which happen, your stop loss or your target, that's it. So calculating this risk to reward ratio, I call it R multiple, but what I suggest for many new traders is shoot for a two to one or three to one R multiple or risk to reward ratio. And what this is, is determining how much you're willing to lose to see if the market will move in your direction. So let me explain with this example on the left here. So I had a demand zone created in the beginning of the day and I saw price re-enter this zone. So now I'm looking to play the market long, play with buyers to target this supply zone. So at this point, the market just looks like this, one, but one bullish candle out of supply. This is a bullish engulfing candle. I've got all my signals to take the market long. Now, before I put the trade on, I need to determine how much I'm willing to risk to see if this trade will work out. So I determined that if price broke out below the bottom of this demand zone, it will invalidate my strategy, and that's where I'll get out. That is the 20% chance that this trade won't work out in my favor and I will determine my target, which is my profit taking or my reward. Now, three to one refers to the points, uh, the price that you're trying to capture. It's not necessarily risking 100% to make 300%. It's not that. What it is is the number of points on the side here. So it's a ratio of one point to three points to reward. And sometimes, you only get one to two, which is perfectly fine. You can 
easily make 100% trading options on a two to one risk to reward ratio. That's perfectly acceptable. This scenario, I made about 100%, but it all depends which option strike you pick. But the most important thing is to draw out your risk to reward ratio and determine how much you're willing to risk to see if this trade works out in your favor. This is the most important part of the process, which I learned is that you need to set these rules for yourselves before you enter a trade. Otherwise, you're just gambling, you don't have a strategy, and it's not gonna build you consistent profits. So that's what I mean by calculating our multiple before you put on any trade. But remember, everything we've gone up to so far is before you've put on the trade. So now you've identified everything. At this point, you put on the trade, you click buy, and this is step number five, which is capturing the market imbalance. Now you're in your trade and you have one job, is to manage your risk and wait for your target to hit. There's two scenarios, like I said before, either your stop loss hits and your strategy's proven incorrect, or you wait for your target to hit and you take profits at your target zone for your two to one, three to one risk to reward. And at, during this step, you're going to watch price action tell you the story of the market. Are buyers in control? Are buyers actually coming into the market like you wanted them to? Or are more sellers coming in and they're gonna turn the market around? These are all the things that you have to allow yourself to be open to see what the market is telling you and not be fixed in a certain state of mind. Because you need to accept this possibility that the market could disobey your plan. Like I said, there's 20, 30, sometimes 40% chance that the market won't operate in your, in your direction. And the last step that's important about capturing the market imbalance, which I stress, is you need to let your profits run. Now, what that means is you cannot just suddenly take profits when you see there's green in your account before you hit your target zone. You need to wait for your, your price to hit your target zone. If you just constantly take your profits before price hits your zone, that's fine. You might be making money, but when you lose 30%, those losers might overwhelm those wins. And unless your winners are bigger than your losers, you're never going to reach consistency. Your losers are just going to slowly eat away at your profits. and You're not going to see a positive equity curve in your account. So you need to let your profits run and hit your target and only then exit the trade for your profit. So this is going over what I said. This is an example of that trade that I showed you before. We saw consolidation and strength underneath the supply zone, and this was my target zone up here. Yes, there was selling, a lot of selling that happened throughout this trade. However, I waited for my target to hit because I never saw confirmation to get out of this trade. This is possibly the most difficult part of your trading is waiting and waiting for your price to hit. Even the scenarios right here, you would have wanted to exit your trade here thinking, oh, price can't make it above this zone. I saw all of these bullish candles, these long wicks to the downside as opportunities for more buyers to come in and push price up to my target. So this is very important when you're in a trade Everything is going to be telling you to take your profits because you see green in your account and you want to lock in those profits. I'm telling you, unless you learn to hold on to those profits until your target zone, you're never going to see a positive equity curve in your account. So lastly, number six, this is such a crucial part of my trading, which I learned, which is why I'm including it in a step. So at this point, you've already taken your profits or your loss, whatever it is. But after you put on your trade, you need to log it and recreate the trade in your trading journal. This step will allow you to refine your skills as a trader. I always say you cannot improve on something unless you measure it. If you write down your trades every day and write down what you did right, what you did wrong, and identify these problem points, these problem patterns, and come up with solutions to fix them. 
you won't see consistency. You need to do this every single time you put on your trade. And trust me, it's not my favorite thing to do to log a losing trade. Nobody wants to look at their losses and analyze them. You only want to see your winning trades. But I'm telling you, your losing trades hold the most value in showing you your problem points and becoming a consistent trader. So recreating your trades highlights the points you missed in the moment. So when you're in the moment, there's emotions going on, your p l is fluctuating, sometimes you're down, sometimes you're up, and your emotions are tied into your trade. So you can't necessarily think clearly. But we all know hindsight is 2020. When you look back at the market, you will see new things that you never noticed in the moment. And you'll be, aha, that makes so much sense now that I look at it now. And you write it down in your journal and you read it before you enter the market the next day and you apply that to your next trades. And as you do this over time, you'll start solidifying the things in your mind, which you did right, and then creating solution patterns to the behaviors which caused you to lose in the past. So this is just a small example of my trading journal. I use OneNote. I'll show you in a second what my journal looks like. But every single trade, I log in my journal, and I have months of trading data where I collect all of my trades, I review them, I look over my probabilities, which setups are high probability, and which ones might not be winning all the time. So what this allows me to do is to log the outcome of my trade, what went right, what went wrong, and another thing I like to do is grade my performance on each of the six steps that I'm talking about. So give yourself a score from one to 10. How well did I do on identifying market conditions? How well did I do on determining risk to reward? There'll be some days when you want to play the market long and you never even set your stop loss and you therefore you just lose because you didn't have a predefined stop. So grade yourself on the performance of each one of these steps and it will allow you to realize, okay, I've scored a terrible score on drawing my chart patterns or looking for a high quality setup. For the last three days, I've been taking trades that are, that are terrible quality setups. So that's one thing that you'll need to improve on. It allows you, your trading journal allows you to identify your weaknesses and then produce solution patterns to these problems. If you just throw money at the market and you don't analyze your trades, there's no way you're gonna make improvements in the market. So important to understand this. So this is what my trading journal looks like. And here, I'll just show you an example of what I do every single day when I log my trades. So I will usually come up with a little pre-market plan. I'll show yesterday's price action, where I got my supply and demand zones from. And this is what I write, this little example. My main goal today was to play off demand created in pre-market and then watch our supply zones created yesterday and how price reacted to them. I could tell buyers were strong in the morning because we barely touched VWAP and we reversed before we even got our break and retest of pre-market high, which is this green line right here. This was a bullish sign, helped me to switch to longs once we powered through yesterday's supply zones. And I will draw out my trade exactly like this. I'll write down what I was thinking in the moment and how much I made, I made almost 100% on this. They were spy calls, 316 strikes, and zero day to expiration contracts. This is what I wrote. Not my normal trade today, but I attribute it to switching up my plan last minute and going with what I was seeing on the five minute chart and level two. Yes, we had a supply zone from yesterday, which I was expecting to play short off of, but I never saw a five minute candle that made me confident sellers were there. So these are the kinds of things that you're going to write in your journal and they're going to allow you to now perceive these things going forward where once you lacked looking at a certain area of the market now when you journal that and you write that down it's going to allow you to improve in these certain areas it's the most critical factor to my success over the last year and a half in building consistency is journaling my trades you need to do it if you're not doing it you're going to fail for however many years and you're eventually going to start journaling and you're going to say wow this changed the game 
So that's all the six points. Let's just go through them once more time, one more time in order. So you come to the market at the beginning of the morning. You identify market conditions. Number one, taking the temperature of the market. Number two, you draw out your key levels of interest, areas of value where buyers or sellers have been present in prior price performance. And once you've done that, number three, you identify a high quality setup. A high quality setup is chart patterns in a zone with these candlestick patterns, bearish engulfing, hammer candles, showing you that buyers or sellers pushed price to a certain direction. Number four, you gotta determine your risk to reward before you put on your trade, how much you're willing to risk to see if your trade will work. And if it moves against you, you stop out of your trade, your trade doesn't work. That is very important. Once you're in your trade, number five, you capture the market imbalance. You wait for your zone to hit, or you'll hear this time and time again, let your profits run. That is what number five is, capture the market imbalance. So now you've taken your profits or your loss and you log and recreate your trade. You write it in your journal, points that you need to improve on and reading over that journal will help you going forward in your future trades. So that is the end of the six step process. These are all points that you can use today. There's six simple steps. And by starting these six steps, it will give you a framework to move forward and see consistency in your trading. And the most important is logging and recreating your trades to see how you can improve. I always say that just the process of identifying chart patterns, drawing zones can be the easiest part. I learned that very quickly. I learned that in a few months. The difficult part was identifying my problem patterns. And the only way I was able to do that is with journaling my trades in OneNote and writing a little trading journal, writing down how I felt in the moment. So this slide is to tell you that when you're going through your trading process, it is much more important to stick to your process than focus on the profits. You should not care if you're making a $50 on a trade, sometimes even $20. If you obeyed your plan, that is the most important thing. Profits will come later. What you need to solidify and make absolute clockwork every single day is operating by your process. And your process is your target and your stop and your high quality setups. All those six steps, you need to learn to operate by those steps day in and day out. And I promise you, if you do that consistently and identify your weaknesses and fix them, you will see profit in the market. Now, the last point is just to learn that consistent base hits, like I said before, are better than swinging for the fences and striking out. Some people will tell you that you can make 200%, 300% on options. I've done it before. It is possible, but it's not a consistent process. You need to be willing to accept $30, 30% profits, 40% profits, and obeying your strategy day in, day out. If you're here, to make quick money on 200, 300% trades, this is the wrong place. You will not last in this game. You need to learn to make these consistent base hits by operating on your rules. So that pretty much wraps it up. I really hope that you got a lot of value out of this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Follow me on Instagram. Again, my name is Darren Bowman from Bowman Board of Trade. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.